I'm Karen Rogers. And I'm Adam Joseph. Tonight on FYI Philly. We hit a new Philly dining spot that's featuring some old time favorites in a brand new way. So the cheesesteak pot pie, no pie. <laughs> then meet the man who turned his college pastime into an online business that's going nationwide. And so I sort of became the go-to guy for, uh, you know, finding good happy hours. Plus, we'll travel the culinary globe and never leave Philly and discover some of Philadelphia's best kept secrets. It's an FYI for you, starting now. Hello, everybody, and welcome to FYI Philly on this gorgeous spring day. All right, think of the foods you associate with Philadelphia and your youth. We're talking tasty cakes, cheese steaks, even Velveeta cheese. Well, there's a brand new restaurant in Philly called The Square Peg. And it's serving up those familiar retro favorites in a much more modern fashion. What are we going to make? Uh, we're going to make the cheesesteak pot pie. Square Peg chef Matt Levin makes his cheesesteak pot pie using all of the ingredients you find in a traditional Philly cheesesteak, starting with ribeye steak. Right inside of the oil. Nice sizzle. We fry up some mushrooms, onions. There's obviously fried onions in a cheesesteak, right? Gotta have that. And green peppers. For the cheese. We're not using Velveeta. We are using saying? Velveeta. We are. <laughs> we're absolutely using Velveeta. Golden. His cheesesteak pot pie comes in a bowl topped with a house-baked puffed pastry. Why don't you break open to it and so, I'll just have it. All right, so it's yeah. my job to, to make the mess right now. <laughs> That's how this works. See right. that? So really easy. You just kind of cut into the puff. All right, I'm taking, I'm take, going in there because it looks the, the too good. the perfect cheesesteak bite. Here we go. Oh, God. It's as good as it looks. Chef Levin describes the menu as a novel approach to diner-inspired comfort food. He also makes a mac and cheese grilled cheese sandwich served with vodka-laced drunken tomato soup. How do you dream something like this up? You're sitting at the diner and you're saying, you know what would be better than this? <laughs> uh, I, I wish it was that easy. Um, it's most of the time in the middle of the night because I keep a pad and paper next to my bed. And I do come you really? Up you like wake up in the middle of the night? With ridiculous ideas and write them down. That's how we came up with his tacos in a bag. It's all of the ingredients of a taco, but you can eat it right out of a Fritos bag. Um, you can dump it out, right? You can dump it out in the bag and then you have a little taco salad with a shred of lettuce at the bottom. I totally love it. Next, we hit the bar where the drink menu is as big as the food menu. What are we going to make? We're going to start off with the uh, apricot jewel. Bartender Kyle Nolan starts with classic mint and sugar with a strawberry thrown in. And we're going to muddle that. You ever muddled before? No, I have not. I never even heard of muddling. <laughs> Turns out muddling is pretty much just crushing. Like that? Now you're muddling. You're, I'm you're muddling. Your already. I'm muddling. We add some Jim Beam rye and apricot liqueur. Now the most important part. OK. The shake. The shake. Can you handle a shake? I don't know if I can, but Kyle's a good teacher, and I'm a quick study. You can shake. Yeah, yeah, get a little rhythm in there. Oh, I didn't say you could do it well. Top with some fresh mint, and there's your apricot julep. Up next, the spiked apple pie milkshake made with real apple pie. Really, you put apple pie in there? Half a tasty cake apple pie. Oh. Throw in some ice cream, blend, and garnish with brown sugar and another piece of apple pie. Do people get this a lot? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they see apple pie and think this is Americana right now. Hey. Square Peg's decor keeps up the theme. There's a prohibition room, a farmland room, and an industrial revolution room, all filled with iconic photos that have been tweaked. One of those Rosie the Riveters is actually Chef Matt Levin. Rosie is somewhere uh, saying, seriously? Yeah, um, and so are my friends, so that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. The famous photo of workers constructing the Empire State Building? At Square Peg, they're building up the Philadelphia skyline, and their lunch pails are all Square Peg boxes, which leads us to where they got their name. It kind of fits with the concept, it fits with me. I'm a little bit of a square peg and a round hole. I do things a little bit differently. And we do things a little bit differently. Like we're taking, you know, approachable foods and making yeah. them a little bit more exciting, a little bit different. So. I'm proud of doing it differently. We're very yeah. proud to do it differently. Square Peg starts brunch service today, and that apricot julep is one of the highlights of the brunch drink menu. Sounds good. All right, our next story is about a Pennsylvania native who took a favorite college pastime and turned it into a thriving online business. Here's that story. On any given evening, you'll find Adam Schmidt in a bar talking trends about some of America's favorite libations, like cocktails going back to the basics. There are all these, these places where are really making the, the drinks from scratch. They're using old 30 style recipes. A new interest in squared vino. Box of wine is traditionally very frowned upon, but there are a lot of uh, vineyards that are actually packaging it in these, uh, these tetra packs. It's better for the environment. It's more cost effective for the for the producer. And the best spots for craft beer. So we're at Perch Pub right now, uh, which is right on the corner of Locust and Broad. This place has 14 rotating craft drafts. 
all of which that are uh, half price during happy hour. And they really strive to get, you know, sort of those more rare beers um, that, that you can't necessarily find in a lot of the typical beer bars in, in Philadelphia. <laughs> so what did Adam do with the likes of his educated liquor palate? Well, in 2009, the St. Joe's University grad started DrinkPhilly.com, a website extolling the virtues of all things alcohol. And it started out with a as a happy hour resource. Uh, so I just started compiling an Excel spreadsheet of all the drink specials in, in Philadelphia. And um, I was just using it because, you know, I was a poor college student. I didn't have a lot of money. My friends started asking, uh, you know, where should we go tonight? Where can we get some good deals? And so I sort of became the go-to guy for, uh, you know, finding good happy hours in Philadelphia. He decided to pour operations into other cities, expanding to thedrinknation.com. We try to be the hub of everything drinking in each of the cities that we're in. So we do so by curated content such as bar reviews, drink reviews, happy hour specials, all drink related events. It's a free online publication. The Drink Nation is our parent site. And then within that we have different local sites. So we have Drink Philly, Drink Baltimore, Drink DC, uh, Drink NJ Shore. We have uh, Drink Portland, which we're launching next month. We send out you know, once a week email to just let you know about all the great events that are coming up. Uh, and really keeps you in the know of you know, everything that's, that's drink related. But even though this biz was born out of college life, their target has evolved. It's about people that uh, enjoy fine drinking. We like to say that we are geared toward the foodies of, of the drinking culture. So when you see Adam Schmidt hitting the streets, walking into the newest watering holes, he and his staff are seeking and sipping out of the best bars and most dynamic drinks in the region for our tasting pleasure. Someone had to do it, Karen, and that Adam stepped up to the plate. And now it's time for our weekly Shelter Me story about a rescue group and some adorable adoptable pets. Hi, I'm Matt O'Donnell, and the winning animal shelter this week is the Animal Welfare Association of Voorhees, New Jersey. Oh, he's a good boy. This no-kill shelter started in 1948 and now adopts out nearly 2,000 animals every year. Programs like this with Channel 6, the more that people know about us, the more we're able to help animals. Spring is puppy and kitten season, so the staff and volunteers have their hands full with puppies like these chow mix siblings just two months old. But there are also more grown-up animals with very special stories like Stubby. Would you like to get interviewed by Channel 6? Stubby arrived with a host of physical issues, and after several surgeries... And it was eventually determined that he would do best uh, as an amputee, and he actually has been doing great ever since we took his leg off a few weeks ago. Something Christy from the shelter can relate to. I'm an amputee too, so Stubby and I get along very well. Yeah. Actually, volunteering with dogs and uh, special needs dogs and cats is how I was able to get better. And the AWA is hoping you will create your own special story by making room in your family for one of these pets. So this is Kyle. He's a five-year-old retriever chow mix. He came to the Animal Welfare Association because he was at a shelter in Georgia that just got too crowded. And if you would like to take Kyle home with you or adopt another pet, just go to shelterme.6abc.com. And while you're there, vote for your favorite animal shelter. Karen and Adam, back to you. If you'd like to have your rescue organization featured, be sure to go to shelterme.6abc.com and vote. Yeah, each week we'll visit the shelter with the most votes mm -hmm. and feature that story here on FYI Philly and on Action News Saturday mornings. And speaking of adorable animals, you and your family can get your fill every day at the Philadelphia Zoo. They just launched their brand new feature, the Trail of the Lorax, in partnership with Dr. Seuss. It's an interactive experience that features a trail of clues left by the Lorax himself and tells the story of a species in peril, the orangutan. I've seen them there. It actually is a really cool exhibit. And to celebrate the opening and the upcoming 6ABZ Zoo special, FYI is giving away one Family Plus membership to the Philadelphia Zoo. Just go to the FYI Philly Facebook page and enter. We'll announce the winning family on the zoo special on May 5th. Yeah, don't go away. We'll be right back. A Mary Caracoli host of We Owe What? Coming up on tomorrow's episode. We are the Chandler family! I'm off to Deptford, New Jersey to meet a family who loves to give. It's the second most expensive 
item on your budget every month. That 10% being non-negotiable. But are they getting enough back in return? No, why aren't you? Let's think of uh, it, why? Let's, I'm not going to let you off the hook that easy. I believe all money problems can be solved with a set of rules. Tune in to 6ABC this Sunday at 1 p.m. to find out if the Chandlers are ready for my challenge. Mary, the Chandler family needs your help. Pico is putting its energy into ways to help you save money and energy, like the Pico Smart AC Saver. By signing up, you can save up to $30 a month or up to $120 during the four hottest summer months. Signing up is easy. A customer contacts us, they don't even need to be at home, and we will come out and install a cycling device on their air conditioning system. And here's how it works. During times of high energy demand, your AC compressor will cycle on and off, but your AC fan will continue to circulate cool air throughout your home, keeping you cool and comfortable. For one customer participating, it may seem like an extremely small contribution, but when everyone in a neighborhood or all of Pico customers get together and participate, you're really helping to reduce that overall energy demand during times of really high temperatures, which is extremely beneficial for the environment. To enroll, just go to Pico.com slash smart ideas or call 1-888-5-PICO-SAVE. Welcome back to FYI Philly. In January, we took your taste buds on a trip around the world and managed to stay right here in Philadelphia. That's the best. This was one of my favorite stories of the season because we found some of the best meals I ever had served in restaurants that are among Philly's best kept secrets. Today I'm going to show you how to make an arepa. Judith Suzara Campbell is the owner and the chef at Sazan, touted as the only Venezuelan restaurant in Pennsylvania. And what goes into making this food, you tell me, is mucho amor, right? Mucho amor, mucho cariño, mucho dedicación and time. A lot, a lot of, of dedication, dedication and, and time. time. She makes everything from scratch, hand grinding her arepas, a corn pancake-like staple in Venezuelan cooking. It's just a tradition okay. of my grandma and remember the, the way they used to do it. Pan cooked, then browned on the griddle, arepas are then split open and stuffed with just about anything. This one over here is the roasted pork. This one has sweet plantains and shredded beef. This is her chicken and avocado arepa. Wow, Alan is hungry. I love it, I love it. And Judy made plenty to eat. The patacón is nearly a foot-high stack of grilled vegetables sandwiched in between mashed green plantains. The asado negro is steak cooked in unrefined sugar cane. And then there's the traditional Venezuelan stews made from her grandmother's recipes. I guess it's time for dessert, too. Yes! For that, we turn to Judith's husband, Robert, nicknamed the Chocolate Alchemist. He starts with raw cacao beans. This has more antioxidants than anything else in the world. This is 20 times right? more than blueberries, green tea, red wine, goji, acai. This is the monster. So there's a reason to eat your chocolate. Yeah. Robert roasts and hand peels the beans and then blends ingredients like whole oranges, honey, and lemon juice. And lets the mix simmer until it's a thick and decadent drink. You're spoiling me because now I'm never gonna drink hot chocolate again. Oh, I, I ruin everybody. <laughs> this is just one of his 27 hot chocolate recipes, all the perfect end to his wife's Venezuelan cooking. Now we're off to Port Richmond. So. Where the Chev family has been making kielbasa since 1938. And my grandfather came over from Poland. He worked in the area as a butcher. He basically started making kielbasa down in his basement for his family and friends. It was so popular, he bought an old horse stable and built three brick ovens to smoke the meat. There's a tier up here, tier up here. Each household's about 500 pounds kibasi. The brothers make their kibasa just like their grandfather did. Using fruit woods, walking on hot coals in ovens kept at 170 degrees with smoke so intense, it brings a layman to tears. Been doing it since I was four years old. I have never been burned, never been singed, never caught on fire. So it's just a tradition. When it comes to stuffing their kielbasa, the Chevs use all natural right, casings. You hold here and I'll push the meat through. And the cliche holds true. Making sausage is not a pretty process, as our intern James no, 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 discovered. No, 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 you're breaking it. No, 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 come on. Hold, hold. The Chevs also make homemade pierogies and bigos, a popular Polish stew made with cabbage, mushrooms, and five kinds of meat. All the goodness in the world, it's simmered for 16 hours. And then there's their mother's famous galumkis, cabbage stuffed with beef, pork, rice, and secret spices. A lot of love goes into them, a lot of hard work for it. For a taste of Southeast Asia, we headed to Vientiane Cafe in West Philadelphia. 
My mom, when she came to America, she wanted to provide cuisine for Laotian, Cambodia, and Vietnamese community. And um, she started, you know, cooking at home. Soon she was cooking for 40 Southeast Asian refugees a day, so mom and her two daughters decided to make it a business. This here is our shrimp pad thai with the bean sprouts and lime. Spicy chilies and sweet lemongrass are the traditional flavors. On the menu, you'll find dishes like pan-seared tilapia with ginger sauce, barbecued Cornish hen, homemade Laotian sausage, and chicken pad ki mao, which translated literally means drunken noodle. It's a mixture of everything, spicy, vegetables, so drunken noodles. <laughs> the restaurant has a large vegetarian following, and the nam salad is one of the biggest sellers, with deep fried jasmine rice, coconut, scallions, mint, and lemongrass. It's like everything of Southeast Asia in one dish. The second annual Philadelphia Science Festival is underway. It's a whole citywide celebration showcasing the impact of science and technology on our society. There will be over 100 fun events taking place across the city from now through April 29th. There will be exhibits, lectures and movie nights. We stopped here at the Franklin Institute to find out more. The Philadelphia Science Festival is a 10 day celebration of science. So it's events all over town for the whole family. All are um, accessible, really easy to find, easy to get to, and um, packed with things that you wouldn't really expect when you think about a science event. So they're super interactive, really engaging, and fun for everyone. We have um, events involving food and wine and beer, and then we also have events talking about um, that, that are all hands-on, super interactive, really engaging, talking about the science of art, the science of music, the science of film, and really looking at all of the things we love and the things in the city that make our lives possible. The festival offers us an opportunity to change what people may think or what that stigma of what a science event really is. So often we've heard that a, um, a science event is a bunch of old men in lab coats sitting up on a stage talking at an audience instead of really engaging with that audience. So we want to make sure that all of these events engage people in a new way that they can really identify and feel the different topics that we're presenting and, um, and show that science can be fun and interesting and important and it really relates to our lives. I'm Mary Caracoli, host of We Are What on 6ABC's Live Well Network. I'm searching the country for families that need my help. Are you an extravagant spender? How many boxes of cereal are on your list? I'm hearing like six. Is your other half clueless about your cash crisis? Without telling Ed, I bought a poll. Sounds like you need my help. Are you ready for the challenge? No! I could be coming to your house soon. Apply at livewellnetwork.com slash we owe what. Welcome back to FYI Philly. Back in January, we were in the midst of the winter doldrums and we visited a new shop on the main line that was bursting with life. We can just imagine what the spring season has brought to the space. It's a shop that sells green and believes in green. At Valley Forge Flowers in Wayne, you can stop and smell the roses and the orchids and all kinds of exotic plants growing in their English conservatory. The flower shop, in business for three generations, has just undergone a huge expansion and now has more than 7,600 square feet of green space. We're going to be able to do silk flower workshops, make your own wreath workshops, fresh flower arrangements, um, make trough gardens. It's more of a meander, stay a while kind of place. The shop not only looks green, it is green. A geothermal system heats and cools the building. All of the gutters and downspouts feed into an underground 1,700 gallon tank that holds water used to irrigate the plants. And 95% of the lighting is produced by low watt LED bulbs. So the lighting for this building is really only about 20% of what it would take to light a typical building of this size. The shop was also designed to be eco-friendly. The floors are made of recycled bricks and reclaimed wood. The paint is low VOC. And the tables, trays, and cases that display the shop's body, pampering gifts, and interior decor merchandise are all vintage. 
Well, that rack, for instance, is out of an old pharmacy. It's a pharmaceutical stand. It's uh, over 100 years old, so the components were all vintage. The designers also tried to source all of their materials locally. That English conservatory was actually built in Lancaster County. There's a cafe floor serving pastries from Art of Bread in Narberth and coffee brewed with beans certified by the Rainforest Alliance. A green wall sprouting with living plants not only looks beautiful, it improves the air quality inside the store. We wanted the space to look and feel green. It is environmentally friendly, but we wanted a uh, the person using the space to feel that as soon as they were in the environment. We really wanted to provide something that was not available out here on the main line, something that's environmentally conscious, but also provide products, workshops, and a neighborhood type of atmosphere store where you felt welcome and you wanted to belong and stay a while. Valley Forge Flowers is owned by Campbell Subaris, Dorrance, Dodo Hamilton. She was the inspiration for the whole green expansion. And be sure to check out their excellent blog to find out what's fresh for spring. We'll be right back. Want to know more about what's hot in Philly? Check out FYI's partner, Philadelphia Magazine. Go to phillymag.com and become a Philly Mag subscriber.